We are here in the mountain kingdom of Nepal to meet Ishwali Katwoda, who is a master bee breeder. Because of his bees, the villagers in his community have beautiful, calm, and productive bees. You can see how they do not even have to wear any protective clothes. You can also see people are living nearby. The queen bee lays all the eggs in the beehive. She is the only fertile female. You can identify her by her large abdomen, full of eggs. Interestingly, all the worker bees are also female, but are infertile. When a queen is young, she is fertile and lays thousands of eggs per day and keeps the beehive strong. After a few years, she becomes less fertile and lays less eggs. The beehive will not grow so much when the queen is old. For this reason, the queen is so important, and even more so because she defines the nature of the colony. Now, let's meet Ishioli. Here he is. So, to queen rearing. The first step is to identify and mark the queen bee using a special marker pen. This makes it easy for us to find her. First though, it surely marks a worker bee so that the others get used to the smell of the ink. Bees communicate largely by scent, so this is important. We must be careful to protect the queen bee, as the workers may not recognize her with the strange scent of the ink and end up killing her. He surely finds the queen bee and gently grabs her by the wings. This is not easy and takes some practice. You have to be careful not to crush her body. Mark her thorax with a pen. Let it dry a little and introduce her back into the colony. See how the worker bees crowd around her and try to take the ink off. They must really love her. Now, when we get to bee breeding, the first thing we do is find a nice colony of bees with good, calm, productive character. From the good colony, we find a brood frame that has lots of young larvae laid by the queen. It surely here has found a nice frame and shakes off the bees gently. He uses a bee brush to brush any bees away and keeps a pot of water also. This helps him so propolis does not stick on his hands. He doesn't like that. Here is a young larvae that is grafted into a queen cell cup. It is surrounded by royal jelly. Royal jelly is a special food that worker bees develop and feed the larvae to nurture queen bees. Once inside, we set up and using a special queen breeding frame that has two lines of queen cells on it. The cells can come out easily and we then begin the delicate job of grafting. He surely uses a headlamp so he can find a larvae that is right for grafting. He uses a special grafting tool that picks the young larvae from the honeycomb and places each in a cell. Grafting is a delicate operation and takes a lot of practice to get it right. Here is a young lava that is perfect for grafting. To explain to you how a queen cell is formed, on the first day, the egg is laid. It is very small and sits vertical in the cup. 
On the second, it starts to fall over. And on the third, it lies flat on the bottom of the cell. On the fourth day, it starts to take shape and this is when we graft the egg into the queen cell. It is also when the egg becomes a larva. On the fifth, the worker bees feed the larva royal jelly and build up the walls of the queen cell. On the sixth day, she starts developing her segments of the head, thorax, and abdomen. The growth continues on the seventh as she is continually being fed royal jelly. Then on the eighth day, the queen cell walls are fully built and the cell is closed for the queen to fully form and emerge after a total of 16 days. It surely works while his family looks on. Maybe the son will take over from the father one day in his important work. Let's hope so. Once all the cells have been filled with lava, we insert the buzz back into the queen rearing frame. A wet towel is used to cover the frame so the lava doesn't dry out and die. Isholi's good friend Bali is there to help as always. Now we go back outside to the apiary and put our brood frame back into the mother colony. Usually is careful not to damage the or mother hurt colony any bees. is the most important part of the beehive. This is a great thing about the nature hives. of the queen bee. We can take out and move we often look for a colony that is calm, productive and resilient honey to and pests. pollen to feed and strengthen other hives. Now what Isholi does, he takes the queen cell frame with larvae and inserts it into a queenless hive. But first he surely takes out another queen cell frame he inserted days back. You can see the worker bees are raising the queen cells beautifully with their divine hexagonal design. A true wonder of nature and its inherent magic from the celestial stars. Notice how he surely treats his bees with loving care. Bali is now taking the newly grafted queen cell frames and putting them into the starter colony. We leave them there and the worker bees are going to go to work raising their new queen. There is just one more thing to do and that is to what? Feed the bees. We feed the bees to keep them strong. Bees need food and drink, protein and carbohydrates like honey and pollen. It surely uses soybean flour, but we can use maize or cassava flour. Then add some pollen and some honey. It is then mixed together into a nice paste. You can try mixing different things together and see what your bees like. It is then put inside the beehive on some plastic. The bees love it. Now to drink, we pour sugar water into a cup inside the hive. It is half sugar and half water. You see the sticks are there so the bees do not fall in and drown. You can see how Isholi has put sugar water in a cup, bee food, and you see there is some plant. It is Atmesia bush. The Atmesia plant is used to treat tropalapsis. We can maybe alternate with tobacco plant, which can also be used in the smoker. Also, you can see there is a hole chopped into the bottom of the beehive with some mesh over it. This is for ventilation to keep the bees cool in this hot climate of Nepal. We also need to do this in Uganda, especially in areas with a hot climate, don't we? Ventilation is also on the top here, as it surely puts the cover back on the starter colony, letting the bees do their work on raising queens. 
It is time to relax a bit in the evening, as tomorrow we have some more other work to do. Ishwali and Bali live on the border of a big national park called Chituan. It is a beautiful place. From there comes lots of wild bee swarms. In a nearby hotel, some wild bees have nested. But we are not here to take them away, no. The Nepali also like honey, so we are here to harvest. The wild bee lives outside under the shade of cliffs mostly. But in this case, it is under a balcony. They are called Apis dosata laboriosa, and they are a bigger bee than what we have here in Uganda. We need to protect ourselves a little bit, so Isholi and Bali pull up their socks, put on veils, and light a large roll of Hessian bag to use as a smoker. These men are true professionals. First, using the smoker and brush, Bali brushes the bees off the comb where the honey is. The bees just fall off the comb and fly away. They are not attacking at all. It is very impressive for this wild bee. I was quite scared myself. Now it is time to harvest and Bali chops out the honeycomb while it surely has the bucket ready. Bali and Isholi work together. It is always good to work in pairs and help each other. Nice work, guys. Here we can see the wild bee is also making queen cells to make new queens and will spread to new colonies. Now the second comb is harvested. The honey harvested is in very big chunks and the honey is very watery from this bee. The third one is next, but there's also the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. The wild bee prefers to live in houses with humans because in the national park, the honey badger and the sloth bear are not as nice as Isholi and Bali when they come to get honey. These men are true legends of Nepal. Everybody loves them. Also, because when they harvest the honey, it is shared with the hotel owners, 50-50. Notice how watery the honey is. The rest of the honey is taken back to his shop and his family are also very happy. It's all hard work with some sweet surprise. In the evening, we are back to check on the hives. Here is a frame he put in some days ago, and the bees have worked up the queen cells. The yellow queen cell cups are closer together and good for royal jelly collection. Here are the queen cells we grafted yesterday. Nothing has happened. Nothing. Nothing. We looked and found the worker bees have started to make their own queen cells. This queen is called cell an emergency yeah. queen cell. This is not good. So that I, 
I'm surprised why they, they do not make a queen cell more. She come out from this cell, you know? She come out from this cell. We can see the queen has already emerged, and if we look closely, we can see there is the queen. There she is. Waka bees have not fed the grafted larvae royal jelly, as they have no need, as they already have a queen. Sometimes nature is hard to control. In another starter colony, where the queen has not emerged yet, we find emergency queen cells that have been developed. Yet our goal is to make artificial queen cells. With emergency queen cells, we haven't selected a good character that we prefer. There are many more benefits when we choose the right larvae, and it's not this one. There are many queen cells here that need to be prevented to become queens. That is why we kill these emergency cells and make it queenless. It is tough, but necessary. Now he surely uses queen cells to collect rare jelly for his Chinese customers. He opens the cell and takes out the queen larvae so he can scoop the jelly itself. He uses a flat stick to do this. He collects it in a jar and puts it in the fridge. Would you believe the skills this man has? He surely is definitely an amazing man who is dedicated to his work. In Uganda, we need to improve genetics of the bees through bee breeding or they can become more and more aggressive and less and less productive. We need to treat them right and breed a good, calm, productive bee. When we do this, we will succeed in beekeeping, produce more honey and we can live in peace with bees as he surely does with his bees in Nepal.